Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I have not made a video on here in so long. Um, I've had so much going on. Um, if you watched any of my previous videos, you know that I was pregnant. I am have had my baby and I'm pregnant again. Proof is in the pudding. Um, and I'm also down in Dallas, Texas. I am travel nursing now. So, um, I just kind of want to jump right into some information for you guys and kind of update you on what's been going on as far as me um, and nursing and just a little bit of information about um, how travel nursing is going and if that's something that you're interested in or thinking about going into, um, maybe this information can help you kind of decide if that's the route you want to take or if... Uh, you know, staff nursing will be a little bit more fit for you, whether it's um, temporarily or um, permanently. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is what is travel nursing? Um, it seems like common sense, what is travel nursing? But it's really not. Um, a lot of people, my low battery light came on, I apologize. A lot of people assume that travel nursing means that you actually have to leave the city that you reside in in order to get a contract somewhere else. Um, while this is generally what travel nursing is, there is a little bit more to it. Um, there are such things as local and travel contracts that you can pick up, which is number one, one of the things out the gate that you should know about that I don't think a lot of new nurses know about and what I mean by not just new, but new to traveling, is you can still go through a travel company and a lot of times pick up local contracts depending on the facility. So different facilities will have um, different parameters on what they will consider as, you know, for a traveler. So one agency might say you have to travel more than 60 miles from your home, tax home or whatever. Um, in order for that to be considered a travel assignment. Um, and then others might be 50 or whatnot. It just depends on the facility or agency that you're going through. And I say facility because sometimes um, the agency's parameters and then the facility's parameters are different. So the hospital might say, we're not accepting anybody who stays within 65 miles of the facility. So uh, like here in Texas, that's a big thing. I think it might be up to 100 miles for some facilities that I've applied to that they will not accept um, travelers because they don't want any local travelers. They're really trying to phase out of contracts altogether down here just because it's created like a shortage in staffing or whatnot. But I'll talk about that later. Um, so that's first of all, one thing I wanted people to know is the difference what is travel nursing, which is leaving away from your tax home of residence, um, but it also can be a local contract that you can pick up through a travel agency. So I would group all of those together because you can find those contracts on these traveling agency websites. So if you go on one um, and you see a contract for the area that you live in, you should call and look into it because you still could potentially pick up a contract through the agency at that hospital making um, the same money, uh, so to speak. And I'll go over that later. Okay. Moving on. Travel nursing requirements for travel nursing. This too is something that you definitely should consider. Um, when, especially if you're a new travel, a new nurse that wants to start traveling and I have, it'll be two years of experience in May, but I am a relatively new nurse. Um, also, if you are a nurse that, again, has been in staffing for a while, but you're new to traveling, this is something new that you're thinking about doing. So, one, um, one thing that's important to remember as a new nurse is most assignments require two years of travel experience. Now, you will get some people that tell you that you only need one year. Some websites may say you only need one year, um, but a lot of assignments um, require that you have two years. Now, I lucked up 
at the, I came in at the end of COVID. I've been traveling since January and there was still a significant amount of assignments available. And I was able to sneak in with my like one year and eight months, nine months of experience. So that was just something that was that slipped through the cracks. Um, but generally, like I'm seeing now, it's time for me to renew my um, contract is up April 30th. And I am having a hard time renewing a contract because now they're not so stressed about having travelers. COVID has started to slow down now. So they're really starting to sift through um, who's applying and a lot of the people that are applying do have that minimum two-year experience. So I say that to say if you are new and you're thinking about going into traveling, I would wait as hard as it is for your two-year mark because that'll just make it so much less stressful for you to travel. Um, and again, if you're one of those ones like me that was able to slip through the cracks, um, I would just hate for you to get in the position that I'm in, which can be very stressful as well, trying to roll over into another contract and you're having a hard time because you don't have two years of experience. So that's one of the requirements that um, is important when considering traveling. Another thing I wanted to talk about is, does it matter if you have your ASN or BSN? No. <laughs> so um, I wouldn't say that that's a bit, been a big thing um, that I feel like, makes their breaks if they take you on as a new traveler and extend an offer for you to take a contract. Other thing to think about is having your certain certificates, such as basic life support versus um, advanced care life support or ACLS. Now, here in Texas, a lot of hospitals do require you to have advanced care um, life support certificate. Um, I came from a med surge unit in Little Rock, Arkansas. We weren't required to have an ACLS. When I got down here and I got on my contract, I also, again, was able to slide into a facility, which was a smaller facility with just my basic BLS certificate, which is the basic life support. Everybody, every nurse needs that. It renews every two years in Arkansas. When you renew your nursing license, you usually are due to renew that too. Um, but again, that's just one of those things that goes along with having two years of experience. A lot of hospitals do require that you have that ACLS certificate. Um, so that's one of those things that if you are staffing now, a lot of facilities offer that class for free. I would go ahead and take it, take advantage of that and get that under your belt. I know um, before I started traveling, which was kind of spur of the moment, I'll give you guys that story in another video, but um, I had an opportunity to take my ACLS at the hospital that I was at um, in Little Rock, and I did not just because my supervisor kind of was like, yeah, we have it available, but you're a med surge nurse, so you really don't need, you know, it's not required that you have that certificate. It's a few nurses, you know, that are charging or whatnot that have the responsibility to kind of maintain that ACLS, but generally as a med surge nurse, it's not required that you guys keep that, um, you know, that it's important that you have that, that everybody on the floor has that. So I really didn't push um, to get it and I regret it and I wish I would have. So I do plan on by the end of this year, going ahead and getting that, whether I can get it through a facility um, that I pick up a contract at, or whatever I need to do to get it, that's um, my next step. Because again, when looking for contracts, that's one of those things where when they really start sifting through contracts, two years, they'll slide you off to the side. If you don't have ACLS, you're also going off to the side. That's one of those things that they, if that's the requirement, that's the requirement. And that's not just travel nursing, um, state to state, some hospitals even hire you on as staff, they want you to have ACLS. So that's something that you should get, even if you're going into med surge um, and you're not like critical care or anything like that, still get your ACLS because you may need it later. And even if there's an emergency on your floor, at least you'll have that information because you never know when you'll need it or if nobody else is available who does have that. So another thing I wanted to talk about is travel nursing pay. So not going to get into details. I think generally people know it's, you know, it's, uh, 
common information, public information, that travelers make more money than staff. That just is what it is. Um, but specifically, how are they doing that? So um, what you need to think about is as a traveler, you make um, base pay and then you have a weekly stipend. The stipend is where you make money and this is the difference between that travel contract and local contract that I mentioned earlier. One thing you need to think about is the base pay. You wanna ask them for your pay package, which will be a breakdown of your base pay, your stipends, any type of reimbursement that you get, whether it's food or whatever you wanna break down. I say that because the base pay is taxed. So if your base pay is like $65 an hour or whatnot, that's not good because they're gonna tax all of that. You really want your base pay to be lower. Where you make the money in traveling is with the stipend, the weekly stipend that you get, which is usually like your housing stipend. So you might have like $30 base pay and then you might have a thousand dollar stipend every week. So that's where all your, you know, the extra money that you're making is coming in. And I'm just using those numbers for an example. Somebody's trying to get them, but I locked them out. You need something? Okay. So, anywho, back to what I was saying. Um, the how the stipend is where you are making your money as a travel nurse. Um the difference with that and lo a local contract is with the local contract, you don't receive the stipend. So instead of your base pay being $30 an hour, it'll be $66 an hour. It'll be $70 an hour. It'll be 85, whatever they're offering, that'll be your base pay and that'll be taxed and you don't get the stipend. So you still can apply. You still can put in for that position and you still can go with the agency but again, you don't get that stipend, so you don't get to experience the benefit of having that, which it is tax-free. The stipend is tax-free versus when the contract is local, you just get your base pay and they'll tax that. Another thing would be that you do get paid weekly, so that's good. I really hadn't considered that. Maybe people know that, but if you don't, you get paid every week, so that is very good um, to me. I've loved that I get a check every Friday. I know to anticipate that. So that's good. Sometimes they deposit early on Thursday. So that's another thing is you do get paid weekly. Also with travel nursing, many companies do offer benefits. So if benefits is something that you needed, but you were a little leery because you felt like you might not have that option being that you're going um, on contract positions through an agency, they do offer benefits. I would just caution on reading through and make sure they're the best fit for you financially because some of them can be a little bit more pricey than others. Um, I personally don't use any of the benefits except dental maybe, I think. Just because my husband is military, we use um, military benefits, um, TRICARE. Um, if you know, you know. But anywho, that's uh, who we kind of gauge all our benefits and stuff through. So I've never had that problem. The last thing about pay is negotiating. I get a lot of friends and people ask me, well, can you negotiate contracts? Um, You can. I just feel like it depends on the market. Now, um, when they come and offer you a pay package, you have the opportunity to accept it as it is or negotiate it. And a lot of times what I base or would base that decision off of, because I haven't necessarily negotiated, I've thought about it before, is what is offered around you? Um, what else is available? What else are other people paying? That's a big thing um, when going into nursing that I'll talk about later as well when I talk about choosing a recruiter, excuse me, is um, that. So... Yes, you can negotiate contracts, but um, just know what the what you're worth. What are people around you in that same area paying? Um, and 
in that area, how badly do they need travel nursing contracts? And jump right into it, rolling off of that idea of negotiating is your recruiter. Um, it can be very stressful going into travel nursing if you don't come in contact with a good recruiter. Um, a lot of times I even hear people say, I was going to go into um, travel nursing, but I reached out and they didn't get back with me or I would respond and I hear from them for a few days. You have to be careful of who you are communicating back and forth with because that can make or break your experience and the availability of contracts um, and all of that. So I would say always, if you're thinking about traveling, shop around. What I did that kind of helped me out is um, I would ask people what company they go through instead of just blindly going online and just applying, which I do do now. I do do. I do now um, just because I'm not, you know, I have a lot more time to find one. And I actually do have a recruiter that I work with that does a pretty good job at one company. Um, but yeah just shop around and ask people when you're at work if you're thinking about traveling or even if you get on a, uh, an assignment ask them what company are you going through how's your recruiter a lot of time companies when you call if you've been working with a recruiter they will um put you back with that one but if you aren't having a good experience then you definitely need to speak up and talk to um maybe corporate or whoever is over them, just to uh, kind of try to get yourself out of that situation. Cause like I said, that can make or break your experience. Um, ideally, if you can work it out with them, that would be good. I mean, a lot of times you can do that by calling them. Um, you'll realize that many times they communicate with you through text message or a request that you do. And that can just be a lack there um, of why you're not getting a respond, why they're not responding or why there's a miscommunication. So one thing that you could do is reach out and directly call them. So that way you can get everything across that you need to say, that can hear your voice, that can hear the urgency. Um, and maybe you guys can kind of settle out whatever miscommunication it was, but by any means, if it is not, you need to figure out how to go over them and get a different recruiter. The next thing I wanted to talk about, also spinning off of, um, negotiating for contracts is knowing what's available which goes along with knowing what you're worth um here in texas again like i said travel contracts are really starting to condense they're starting to stop consolidate them because staffing has gotten so bad so there's not a lot of contracts here like you go on any website and there's not many here um and i am trying to travel within the Dallas Fort Worth area so that makes it even more limited because I'm really not willing to go outside of maybe a 50 mile radius of Dallas to get a contract now when negotiating contracts you need to know this because you can't try to negotiate up if they really don't even need you there's only like two positions open um, so again, that just goes along with knowing what the market is, continuing to shop around see what's available through multiple, um, travel contracts. So you know what you're worth. So you know, um, what the going price is, if it's going up or if it's going down, cause it fluctuates just because you were at, you know, this pay, um, with this contract, the next one doesn't mean that it's going to stay the same or go up. It could go down, just depends. Last thing I want to talk about is the experience. You're going to be around new people, number one. Um, new people, new attitudes, new doctors. So that's something that you need to think about. Not everybody is nice. Um, thank God, in my experience, um, most of the people that I've been um, exposed to that I work with, they're really nice, they're really helpful. But you do get a few or even doctors that aren't so nice. So that's one thing to consider, excuse me. Another thing is um, new policies. So uh, especially if you're a new nurse um, or you've been at a fa one facility for a long time, you're used to doing things a certain way. When you get to a different facility, there are new policies in place. Um, and that can be a little um, confusing to say the least 
because you're used to stuff going a certain a certain way and it might get carried out totally different there so that's something that you have to get used to and used to quick so if you're not able to adjust quickly to different policies um, then that might be something that you need to consider another big thing that you should think about um, and the last thing with the experience is new resources or in many cases less resources you're traveling so they need somebody to fill in they're short staffed um, they have some type of um, employee shortage or whatnot so you might walk into a situation where you have more workload than you're used to I have more patients the patient ratio might be higher you might have less resources I know the hospital that I'm at now they don't have a phlebotomy team so we draw blood as well they don't have text many times so you are the three in one you play the tech you play the phlebotomy you're the nurse many times you're um, you play a significant role if you're working nights, which I do because there's no doctors available because the hospital is small. Um, so you call out to a different hospital if you would need um, orders or whatnot. Um, so that's something that you need to keep in mind when you're going into travel nursing is the resources. It might be very uncomfortable going from a setting where you're used to having all those resources to one where there is no transport, you're responsible for all that. You need to weigh that with um, how much you're gonna be being paid and if you feel like you'll be able to manage that um, in a professional way um, because at the end of the day, you need to guard your license. And if that's what they say you're responsible for, then that's what you're responsible for. Okay, so to sum it all up, is it worth it? Do I think travel nursing is worth it? That question depends on why you're doing it. Um, if you're doing it for money, then yeah, it's worth it. Um, I say that because irregardless if you're doing it because you wanna make more money, wanna you know, travel the country or whatnot, you're gonna make more money than you would staff. It doesn't matter if the contract is for five or 6,000 crisis pay, or if you're making 2,000 a week. I mean, you're gonna make more than staff. I say it depends on what your goal is because if you went into it for critical pay, then you're looking for that big difference. You're looking for that big chunk. So it might not be worth it to you to be outside of your comfort zone, to be away from your family, to be away from your kids many times, um, to be living here and there for that extra money unless it's a significant amount unless you're making crisis pay you're making five six thousand dollars a week plus um if they drop you down back to two thousand because the market just isn't rocking and rolling no more then it might not be worth it to you no more you might think you know maybe i just go back to staffing for the normalcy of it but if you're going into traveling because you just need a little bit more money um then what staffing will allow you especially if you can get on a local contract i think that um those smaller contracts where you're getting two thousand dollars a week or 2500 a week you might be comfortable with that because again at the end of the day you're still going to make more than you do with staffing um and you still can have the benefit of being home um, being close to family being in the comfort of your own home and things like that so again is travel nursing worth it i definitely I definitely do think that it is, um, depending on what it is that you want to get out of it. Um, now, I do see the benefits of staffing as well and staying at staff. But again, if traveling is something you're going into um, to make more money, there's always space for that and seasons for that. And then again, if it's just something that you feel like you need just that extra boost of income, um, for your family or whatnot or for yourself or whatever you have it and you do have access to a local contract I would say too that that uh, definitely can be very beneficial and definitely worth it in the end so those were just some things that I wanted to jump right back on here and share with you guys because I have not been updating you about stuff in a long time and I don't want to throw a bunch of personal information at you that a lot of you really don't care about um, so I just want to make sure I'm giving you some good, solid information. Um, I do want to start being a lot more active on here. I know I said that last time, but I keep getting pregnant. So 
that's a thing. Um, so I'm just trying to kind of balance my mom life and my nursing and then getting back into my YouTube. So um, I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Um, I'm gonna be back on here probably later today making a video just to um, address those questions that I've had on my previous videos. Um, I did see you guys reaching out and I want, I definitely do wanna respond. I love that you guys reach out. I love the communicating back and forth. I was able to do that initially and then I kind of fell off. So that'll just be a video to kind of um, answer some of those questions that you guys had for me. But other than that, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a good day.